talking, I don't sweat that. If they don't trust me either, I respect that. If she be down the ride, oh, I bet that. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is J.H. How y'all doing, Postal Family? Is everybody good? Is everybody cool? Everybody clean? Are you crisp? Are you feeling iry today? <laughs> Let's talk. We're going to jump right into the video. I'm a little fed up, a little tired of having to talk about the unions, but unfortunately, here we go again. And I want y'all to plug in. I want you to listen. I want you to comment. I want you to use some of your own intellect and see how we gonna fix this problem. I spoke to a young lady and she told me how to fix the problem. And we'll get into that at the end of the video. You zimmy, let's talk. Hello, I'm a mail handler out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, local 331. I pretty much keep up with your videos and notice that you are extremely handsome. No, he didn't say that, but I wanna throw that in there. Let's talk. You had a notice that there's them George Zimmerman. Unions are a hot topic recently. I am reaching out to you to see if you'd be interested in doing a video regarding our local union elected officials. This person is bold, but I'm going to do it anyway. You'll see why. You'll see why in a second. Huh. Oh, boy. Local union elected officials taking advantage of the locals' money. The Department of Labor requires each local to report the IRS book numbers on the Department of Labor's website. We are a small local, so our elected officials' salaries are not paid by the local. Follow me now, family. Follow me. The post office gives elected officials and stewards union time on the postal clock. All right, so sometimes we, when the, the union has to go handle business, they do it on postal time, right? Right, okay, we got that, we got that. If you don't understand it, then talk to your lo local union. I know there's gonna be some union members on here sitting there really aggravated because I'm exposing. If it ain't you, you shouldn't be mad. If it ain't you, if it is you, then you should be mad at the people that is, yeah, okay, let's talk. <clears throat> The local only pays elected officials when they are doing union business such as arbitration, lobbying, and union trips. Out of the 150 union members, two show up to the union meetings. Shame on you. Because what would I tell y'all before? The union is what we make it, right? Right. But, 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 let's continue. The local hold one every three months. It's supposed to hold one every three months, but they don't. They do so, I'm reading what they wrote, so it's a little choppy. They do so two or three times a year. Hmm. About a year ago, I started asking to see the books and the president and treasurer wouldn't show me. I wrote our national union and the national president responded that it was a local matter and left it at that. They told me that something shady, this told me that something shady was going on. So I did some research and found out about the LM3 reports. Y'all know what that is? I don't. <laughs> we'll find out together. It turns out our treasurer has been paying himself around $25,000 a year and our president has been paying himself about $10,000, which is insane. To give an idea, the local generates between eighty to $100,000 grand a year from union dues, but spends about ninety to hundred grand a year on all expenses. The president and vice president, treasurer, branch president, and state rep receive about 40 grand out of that 90 to 100 grand. Last year, the president and treasurer received about 31,000 out of the 40 grand. So I pulled the records back in the 90s and no union official even came close to this amount. I got a hold of the ex-union president of our local, which he was part of the local from the 90s to 2008. And he explained to me what the treasurer does and that there is no reason why we would receive that much or he would receive that much. He also explained to me that our current local has done one arbitration since 2008. One, y'all don't hear me, and does not travel to meet with Congress or do training like the local did back when he was there. He stated this made a difference because this would be the only reason why those officials would be receiving so much money. It turns out this treasurer has FMLA and calls in two to five days a week and has no leave. 
So he is using the union reimbursement form to claim he's doing union business <laughs> at home to make up for his postal salary. Boy, this is exposing. Wow, well, yo, you bold, you bold. I'm pointing at the phone, you bold. <clears throat> All right, I have reported this to the Department of Labor and there was an audit done about eight months ago. The way I was explained from them was that there is audit done first, then if, then if there's a red flags, an investigation is done. The Department of Labor cannot tell me if there's an investigation going on, but the investigators are coming from Washington to interview me in the next couple of weeks, or oh, actually next couple of months. So that tells me they have found something. I am hoping you can do an educational video to educate postal employees to get involved in their unions and ask to see the books. Y'all already know how I feel about it. Y'all, hey, find out some, oh, wait, wait, wait till I finish, okay? Y'all just wait till I finish because y'all gonna need to hear this. Okay, all right. If you do choose to do a video, I can provide you with, provide you with the LM3 reports and give you the website. So you can show on the video how to look up the information. Yep, I didn't get the information, never responded. But I can also provide you with the letter we received from National. I say because about 10 of us members signed a letter asking National to investigate and get involved. I am pro-union, but I also am aware that in order to have an honest and productive union, the members have to attend meetings and hold union officials accountable by filing charges through their constitution and labor charges with the NLRB. I am disappointed with the national and would love for you to make a video to bring awareness. So y'all in the national, don't come at me. I'm just bringing awareness, okay? I want to get to work and back home alive. <clears throat> I called our national CAD department and tried to get them involved again, and they refused. I even went as far as to say I was going to make a video exposing them for not doing anything. This is the best part. And they told me they didn't care if I did. <laughs> well, you just happened to pass it on to somebody that has a voice. <laughs> okay, this shows you how confident and content they are with allowing locals to steal from their members. Anyway, I really hope that you agree to do this so postal employees out there can be aware what's going on, including my local. More than half the members work in another building and don't attend meetings, so this would be the only way to get the work out there, being that you have a big following. Wow, what y'all think about that? That sound like some Now, this is the time when each of you guys say, you know, I heard something about that. You know, I heard, I figured that. And I read the comments. I love reading the comments. But the uh, only problem is, is that the comments do not change a thing. The only thing that's going to change something is that I spoke about in the beginning of the video, I was gonna share some information with you. You guys have to have your voice. Jay, but we already try, you know, you don't really try. But you know what's gonna wake these people up is the moment you guys ask for that one form to withdraw your union dues because you're paying for them and they still have to represent you. Do I condone it? No. Would I do it if I were in this scenario? Absolutely. If you go to get information or your union is not providing you with information that is necessary for you just to sleep well at night, knowing that you can have a job tomorrow, to know that the money that you work for and pay to them is being put to good use and not being used for personal financial gain, then yes, go ahead, get that form. How do we get that form, Jay? human resources, or you can be bold and ask your own union representative, go to your union hall and find out. Now, I was just informed today that the carriers can ask for their forms and ask for their money to stop being withdrawn from their check, right? And they don't have to wait the year period. From what I understand, the APWU, and I know this for a fact, you have to do this in a year the actual annual date that you signed up for the union. 
So you'd have to call human resources, find out your date. Once you find the date out, then you ask them to send you the forms. You find, get the forms, keep them with you. And then you have to mail this form, certified mail, registered, whatever it is, to them within a certain window. It's like a 20 day period from the date that you actually signed up. Again, that's how you do it. Why you do it? Because if enough of you guys stop paying your union dues, it's going to wake somebody up. Somebody's going to say, we need to stop with the foolishness or they're going to vote the person that's conducting the foolishness up top out and get somebody that actually wants to work for you in. It's not about talking about it anymore. It's about being about it. If the rural carriers are going to that extent to go look for another union, to decertify their union, the least anybody that's going through these issues with your own union could do is just stop paying. And when there's enough people that stop paying, it's going to send a wake up call. The bells are gonna start going off and watch, the domino effect will go nationwide. But when you start seeing or digging deep like this individual dear, this, this individual did, um, you know, me, if I were on the outside and looking at this individual, I'm like, damn, why are you so nosy? Well, thank you for being nosy because you found information that you're sharing with the country right now that's gonna give the country information for them to step forward and start doing your own research. And take the time. I mean, how much time is that literally seriously going to take you to go ask for some reports on where this money is, where is it going and where is it going to be spent? That should be what you want. You don't just give people money is it? give your lawyer money and just say, what are you using it for? And it, well, we'll, we'll let you know. Huh? No, it's about time that you step up and start doing things. Individual that I spoke to earlier today stated that she was watching those old videos of back when the union said that we needed to strike. Actually, it wasn't even a union back then. That's when the union originally started, when they decided to strike and those people went to jail. They sure did, because it was against the law for them to strike, right? Right. But they made it happen and they started with the change. I'm not telling anybody to strike, but it took a strong voice and a strong movement in order for things to change. I read every one of your, and this is what I like to do. I like to throw the stalls out there for you guys to sit there and start fumbling and getting upset. But it does no justice if you're not gonna do anything with it. You have to stand up and make things happen. You zim it, this is JH. And uh, if you made it to the end of this video, I want you all to make sure you pay attention. Within the next two weeks, I'm gonna have a postmaster interviewing a postmaster on here and uh yeah yeah i'm gonna be the bad guy no 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 i'm gonna be the pro worker and he gonna be the postmaster and we gonna hit him with some of them hard questions and if you have any questions that you want me to ask this person directly please email me with your list because i'm gonna just start rattling them off and i'm gonna try to be the biggest asshole that i can be to see how he handles it under pressure. He's a really nice guy, but he don't know what he got coming to him. All right, we out. Unexpected expenses stressing you out? Get the money you need now with Loans for Feds, a program designed specifically for federal employees. Bad credit is not a problem. Application is fast and easy with same-day approvals. Apply now.